JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 5th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against uh, all but one of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It lost the most ground versus NOC, SEC and CAD in that order, while it decked out some gains only versus the British pound. The weakening of the dollar suggests that markets continue trading in a risk on uh, fashion. Indeed, uh, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU and US indices were a sea of green with a positive investor appetite rolling into the Asian session today. The reason behind the at behind the advance in the equities outside the US may have been the fact that Biden widened uh, his lead against incumbent President Trump. At uh, the time of uh, this report being written, Biden uh, had 264 electoral votes and Trump 214 in a race to 270. Although Trump is leading in Georgia, North Carolina, Carolina and, Pennsylvania, and, Pen and Pennsylvania, Biden is ahead in Nevada, which could give him the six votes uh, needed to win the race. We've been repeatedly noting that a Biden victory could be positive for equities outside the US, but we also said that it could prove negative for Wall Street due to his pledge for higher corporate taxes and tighter financial regulation. So why did uh, US stocks uh, gain yesterday? This may have been due to the fact that the Republicans appear likely to retain majority in the Senate, something that will make it hard for Biden to proceed with the tax increases and stricter regulations he promised. Thus, even if uh, Biden wins, US indices may continue marching higher. Uh, even if Biden wins, uh, US indices may continue marching higher. The reason why a Biden victory is positive for equities around the rest of the world is because uh, the, Demo the, the Democrat is likely to adopt a softer stance on international trade relations uh, than uh, Trump. Now in the FX world, Biden is seen as negative for the US dollar due to, fis due to his fiscal agenda being looser than Trump's, but uh, with Republicans staying in control of uh, Senate, he may not be able to push through with his, um, with his uh, plans, as we don't expect a major slide in the US dollar. For the same reasons we believe that global equities will gain, we see the risk linked currencies uh, Aussie and Kiwi strengthening as well, as investors abandon safe havens like the Japanese yen. Now, apart from headlines surrounding the US elections, during the early European morning, we also had a Bank of England monetary policy decision. The bank decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0.10%, but expanded its asset purchase program by more than initially expected. According to economic calendars, expe expectations were for a 100 billion pounds increase, but instead the bank decided to go for a 130 billion pounds expansion. In uh, the statement accompanying the decision, officials noted that the outlook for the economy remains unusually uncertain and that they stand ready to increase QE again if uh, market, if, uh, market uh, functioning worsens. The pound gained on the decision and this is because it has already tumbled yesterday on, uh, on reports saying that the Bank of England is considering a move into, into negative interest rates and that it could expand its QE program by, by 150 to 2000, to, excuse me, by 150 to 200 uh, billion uh, pounds. Moving ahead, we believe that um, uh, that the pound's faith is likely to stay mostly linked to developments surrounding the Brexit landscape. 
Negotiation over a post-Brexit trade accord between the UK and the EU continued last week with the EU chief negotiator Michel Barnier saying that the two sides are working hard to reach consensus. So with all that in mind, anything suggesting that the deal could be found in the next few weeks may prove uh, supportive for the currency, while signs that the differences gap is not uh, narrowing may result in weakness. Now, later in the day, it will be the Fed's turn to decide on monetary policy. At its most recent meeting, the committee kept its policy unchanged, but changed its inflation language, noting that they will aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time, so that inflation averages 2% over time. With regards to the new dot plot, it showed that interest rates are likely to stay at present levels at least uh, through 2023. That said, looking at the details, we see that one member was in favor of a hike in 2022 and four members saw rates higher in 2023. Combined with the inflation forecast of 2023, which is at 2%, this shows that some members may not be willing to tolerate inflation above target for long, as pointed in the decision statement. With that in mind, and also taking into account that the US economy continues to relatively improve, despite the spike in coronavirus infections, we believe that policymakers can afford staying sidelined at this gathering. Thus, investors may scan the statement for clues and hints as to how officials are likely to proceed in the months to come. If officials hint, hint that there, is, uh, there are high chances for further easing at the December gathering, the US dollar is likely to slip, while it could gain somewhat in the absence of such wording. In any case, we believe that its broader path will still be affected by the election outcome and any post-FOMC reaction could stay limited and short-lived. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, besides the Bank of England F and FOMC meetings, we also get Eurozone's retail sales for September and the US initial jobless claims for last week. The Euro area retail sales are forecast to have slid 1% month over month after rising 4.4% in August, while initial jobless claims are expected to have declined somewhat to 732,000 from 751,000. We also have we also have five speakers on the agenda. Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and Fed Chair Jerome Powell will hold press conferences related to, the, to their bank's uh, decisions. And we will also get to hear from ECB Vice President Luis de Quindos, ECB Governing Council Member Jens Whitman, and ECB Executive Board Member Isabel Schnabel. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.